today, Father God, that there's rest in Jesus Christ and what he did for them, Father. And I pray today, Father Lord, that those who don't know you, Father, those who have missed the mark, as we all have, Father, will come to know you, that salvation will reign in their hearts today, Father, because this is why you sent your son, Father, to reach and save the lost. So, Father God, we thank you for this message, Father God. We pray that today that you will be glorified. Anoint our lips, Father Lord, to bring forth your word. Power and conviction in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bear with me. I get really nervous and my spanks are kind of tight. If I pass out, we'll just blame it on the Holy Spirit. Um, Jesus Christ came to the earth to provide forgiveness of sin by offering himself on the cross um, as a payment for our iniquity. But also, his sacrifice gave us the opportunity to know the Father and himself. This is what eternal life is about, knowing God intimately, according to John 17, 3. It doesn't start now, it's, or it doesn't start later, it starts now. The bread and uh, the cup we will be taking today reminds us of his sacrifice for us as the perfect Lamb of God. It reminds us that Jesus was the only one who could pay for the redemption, or our redemption. So what? So to be honest with us, to be honest with everybody, we couldn't pay this sacrifice even if we wanted to. Amen. Because God's law, he requires perfection. And I know most of the times I talk to people all the time um, when I'm evangelizing or whatever, and I ask them, I ask them a question, I ask them, where do you think you would go if you were to die together? Mm -hmm. And most people would say heaven. And I'll follow up with a question, well, why do you think happens? Most people say, because I did good things. You know, I went to church. You know, um, I gave a little money here and there. You know, um, I read my words sometimes, you know, or whatever. And I look for that one answer, which is because I have fully believed in and trusted upon the Lord Jesus Christ. What he did. But they don't say that. They talk about what they did. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like we missed the mark. Because in the scripture, Romans 3.23, it says that all have fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned. So what that shows me is none of us could ever obtain God's, perf God's perfect standard in and of ourselves. We need a Savior. Amen. We need the perfect Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. 
to save us. And as, as we look, and I, as I was just looking over the scripture, James 2.10, it talks about if we even commit one of the, of the Ten Commandments of God's law, if we miss one, we have already missed them all. So who are we in and of ourselves to say, because we done did this and because we done did that, we can go to heaven. We can inherit eternal life. Because, to be honest, if it was because we was good enough to get into heaven, Jesus never had to die, according to Galatians 2.21, right? Mm -hmm. So this is why we look to Jesus. And this is why I said what I said about the song. We can't earn it, and we don't deserve it, yet he still sent his son for us. Mm -hmm. And this is why, if we understand the magnitude of what Jesus did and his sacrifice, in turn, we want to live a life worthy and acceptable yeah. to God, yeah. according to Romans 12, 1. We want to live a life worthy and acceptable. We don't do it out of obligation. We don't do it to be made right with God. We do it because of what he did for us. He loved us first, so we love him in return. Come on. It's out of gratefulness. It's out of response to his great sacrifice that we do this, that we read our Bible, that we pray. All these are all those things are spiritual disciplines to grow in relationship with him. Amen. Amen. We don't do those things to be made right with him. Amen. Jesus has already paid the price in full. So who are we? And his thing starts, it starts with humility. It starts with humility. Because I talk to people all the time. And their response when they say, oh, because I'm 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 a good person, I did this, I did that. It's a response of pride. Because basically what they saying is, I can do this on my own. Come on. I don't need Jesus. I don't need what he did. Even though his sacrifice was greater than theirs, I don't need him. That's pride. It takes humility. It takes you seeing how sinful you are. And just because you, you dress up nice on Sundays, you, you, got, you drive a nice car, and you do this good, and you do that good, it doesn't matter. You're still sinful. Any of us, this week, if we're honest, we can say we made a mistake, right? We can say we thought something that we shouldn't have been thinking, right? Come on. And I just feel like sometimes we miss the mark. So as I was reading Romans 9, Paul was very, he was very, he was so... His, his desire was just like, I just want to see people saved. I just want to see my kinsmen saved. But, I, but they're missing the mark because they're trying to do, do, do to be in right standing with God instead of just believing and trusting and relying upon the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did. So I just, I just want to go down to uh, chapter 9 in Romans, verse 30. And it says, what shall we say then that Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness who did not seek salvation in a right relationship with God, nevertheless obtained righteousness, that is the righteousness which is produced by faith. Whereas Israel, though always pursuing the law of righteousness, did not succeed in fulfilling the law. And why not? Because it was not by faith that they pursued it, but it but as though it were by works, relying on their own merit of their works instead of their faith. And that's what most of us do. We miss the mark because we're relying on our own merit of our own works instead of God's plan and what he's already provided through Jesus. So we miss the mark. And, and most, I, I just feel like, man, we got to understand that God's plan is not for those who try to earn his favor by being or doing good or being or doing good enough. It is for those who realize they can never be good enough. And so must depend totally on Jesus Christ. Amen. Only by putting our faith and trust in what Jesus Christ has done will we be saved and made right with God. And I believe that people are so busy trying to reach God that they miss the truth that God has already reached down to them through his son. Amen. All we have to do is believe and totally rely upon Jesus and what he did for us. There's no more striving on our part to be made right with God because by grace... Through faith in Jesus Christ, we have been made right with God, according to Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. And since we're a Bible-believing, Bible-talking church, 
I want to go to Ephesians 2, 8, 9 and read that. And I'm going to be reading out of Amplified. Verse 8, for it is by grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor drawing you to Christ that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life through faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves. This salvation is not of yourselves, not through your own effort, but it is the undeserved gracious gift of God, not as a result of your works, nor your attempts to keep the law so that no one will be able to boast or take credit in any way for his salvation. So why does God save or make us right with God, make or make us right with himself by faith alone? And I believe four things. Faith eliminates the pride of human effort because faith is not a deed that we do. Faith exalts what God has done, not what human do. And so when they respond with, I do this and I do that, it's exalting themselves instead of God. And God can't, God gets the glory over every man. This is why we're here, to give him glory. Faith admits we, faith admits we can't keep God's standard of perfection. We need help. And that's why it takes humility. Faith is based on our relationship with God, not performance. Come on. Amen. Okay, so just a quick um, testimony of mine, but when I first started coming to the church, I think about seven, eight years ago, um, I wasn't saved. Um, I had a potty mouth, uh, took part in certain recreational drugs daily, um, I hung out with questionable people, and I had a certain outward appearance that was not modest. Um, <laughs> as my relationship when God began to develop, though, my behavior and my appearance and my speech started to change. Um, not because I was following a certain set of rules that I had to conform to in order to be saved, um, but because I believed in what Jesus did for me. Yeah. Uh, God met me where I was and offered me salvation and a relationship with him. He changed my heart and attitude towards things that were not of him. All I had to do was put my faith and trust in Jesus. I didn't have to change first. I didn't have to be a certain way first. I just yeah. had to believe in him. Yeah. And I, I remember a coworker of mine at the time was just like, I feel so bad for you because I don't want you to stop being who you were. Like, I don't want you. She just thought that I was coming to this church and just changing because those are the rules of the church. But I explained it uh, similar to when I first met my husband. He wasn't the only guy I was interested in at that time. Or maybe the only person that I looked at or talked to. But as my relationship with him developed, <laughs> or, you know, I might have did single things, but as my relationship with him developed, as we grew closer, and I saw the value in him and that he was worth more than other people or the things of the world. Jesus, my relationship with Jesus was more valuable than the things of the world. Um, I started changing and so I stopped talking to other guys or doing single things because my relationship with him meant more to me. And so in the same way with our relationships with God, we eventually stop doing things, not because we have to or because it's a rule, but because your heart changes and you don't want that. Amen. 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 And that's why I feel like people get so frustrated, man. And like you talk to people on a daily basis, and they're like, man, Christianity is just a bunch of about a bunch of rules. Oh, yes, there are rules, there are parameters, as Doc talked about all the time, to keep you safe. But, as Doc said, we become, we become so focused on the parameters, the rules, that we start living by them. Instead Amen. of focusing on the Savior and His love, that changes us. Amen. Because what is His greatest commandment? 
to love thy God and to love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. If you do those two things, you will want to do everything else. Because you want to please God and you want to please your neighbor. And I believe people become so frustrated with Christianity because they are doing, doing, doing in and of themselves. And living life to save themselves and not looking to the Savior. So they miss it. But just as my, my wife said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it talks about it. If, therefore, if anyone be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. The Mom. old has gone. The old has gone. The new is here. Amen. So there's a change once you believe in Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes into your heart and changes you from the inside out, not from the outside in. Right. So today, as we take communion, let us be reminded that the gospel of Jesus Christ is truly the power of God unto salvation for all those who believe and put their trust in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ alone. Let us be reminded that it's not by our works that we are justified or made right before God. It is by what Jesus Christ has done alone that makes us right with God according to 2 Corinthians 5.21. We can never be good enough to work ourselves into right standing with God because God's standard is not good, it's perfection. Thank God for Jesus and his sacrifice. Thank God for the resurrection yeah. of Jesus Christ that give us the power to live a life pleasing to God and to walk in newness of life. Amen. Let us be reminded today that through Jesus Christ we have been reconciled back to God. Jesus Christ's sacrifice has pleased the Father. The blood of Christ has provided redemption. And it is the blood of Christ that sanctifies us. Um, we are not made righteous by our performance, but by our position through what Christ has done. We are because he is. So while the ushers are bringing forth the elements, let us examine ourselves and ask for forgiveness in any area that the Holy Spirit 